Hello guys, my name is Ginny. Me and my husband Austin met at a work party when I was 23. He is slightly older than me, but I didn't mind it at all. Austin is a pretty attractive guy, so I had no idea why he was still single. Well, turns out it was due to his childhood friend Megan. You see, Austin and Megan were born only three months apart. Austin's mom, Doris, was very close to Megan's mom, so from the very beginning they hoped that their children would be together. While Megan's mom discarded the idea early on, Megan and Doris clung to it. Austin was never interested in Megan. Still, she always thought that they were destined to be together. From what I heard from Austin, he had a troubled relationship with her. He said, I doubt you will have a good relationship with Megan. She doesn't like me dating people. Unfortunately, she has this notion in her head that we will be together. She has already sabotaged all my past relationships. Why do you still keep her around? You should have cut her off a long time ago, I asked. It's not that easy, Jenny. When a person is with you for almost three decades, it's hard to cut them off. Plus... Mum would never accept my decision. I have tried in the past, but Mum didn't let it happen, Austin explained. Why does your mum push you to have a relationship with Megan? You're clearly not interested, I inquired. Well, Mum too wants me to settle down with Megan. She has the same fantasies as Megan does. Megan and Mum can be quite a team when they want to be, and that is all the time. Austin replied. With that, my hopes of having a good relationship with Doris went out the window as well. So from the very beginning of our relationship, I knew that it wouldn't be an easy one. However, nothing could prepare me for the vul and vicious humans that were Doris and Megan. I have simply lost count of how many times they have humiliated me. First, they tried to trick Austin into thinking that I cheated on him. Then, they tried to ruin our dates by showing up unannounced and joining us. Austin had a hard time standing up to them. His mother had a lot of control over him, especially since his dad was never in the picture. The years I put up with the humiliation, I did retaliate, but then never backed down. I couldn't be very mean to them because of my personality. However, I did stand up for myself. The problem was... Austin wasn't cutting them out. I didn't press him to cut off Doris, partly because my mum was no longer with us, so I knew the pain of not having a mum around. But as long as Doris was in the picture, so was Megan. Megan didn't back down ever. She always said, Don't get too comfortable with my man, Ginny. Everyone knows Austin is mine. He is only playing around for fun before he settles with me. We have everything set. Is that why he desperately keeps getting away from you? The last time I checked, Austin made it clear that he didn't want you. Why don't you leave my man alone and get one for yourself? Go ahead and delude yourself, Ginny. Austin will be mine. Just wait and watch. I will do everything in my power to take him away from you, Megan declared. She did try a lot of things. Megan especially went crazy when Austin and I got engaged. I won't go into detail about what she did. It will only trigger me and just depress me further. Let's just give you an example. This woman, Megan, literally showed up to our wedding in a white ball gown. My maid of honor threw her out, and Austin supported my decision. Hell, even Megan's mum apologized to us for her daughter's behavior. Things never got better even after our marriage. We actually moved to a different state to get away from them. Doris was fully dependent on Austin, which annoyed me. However, I didn't have the heart to say anything. They did try to make us come back. Austin and I were firm in our decision. For the first year, we had some peace away from Doris and Megan. However, something happened just after our first wedding anniversary. Doris called Austin and said, Austin, I am in the hospital. 
I had a terrible accident that damaged my spine. I have been here for a while. The doctors are saying that I cannot walk. What, Mom? How did this happen? Why didn't you call me sooner? Austin asked. I didn't want to disturb you, Austin. I know you and Jenny want some time away from me. Megan has been looking after me and helping me, but I need my son, Austin. Jenny, if you are listening, can you please allow him to come and see me? I cannot move, and I need help. If Austin stays with me for some time, I will become better, Doris pleaded. Don't worry, Doris, and positive things will get better. Austin can go and stay there for a while. I understand that he needs you, I assured her. Well, I'm not made of stone. Hearing about Doris's condition made me feel sad for her, plus Austin was devastated and kept blaming himself for keeping his distance from Doris. All this made me realize that I need to let him go for at least a while. So Austin packed up and went to Doris's place, as Doris needed a new and wheelchair-accessible place. I even offered my house so that she can stay there in peace. Guys, that was one of the worst decisions I took in my life. As soon as Austin was with Doris, he became a little distant from me. My mother-in-law would take up all his time and kept calling for help when we talked or FaceTimed. Honestly, I was getting sick of her. I also saw that Megan was over-offering to help Doris. That pissed me off as well, but I didn't say anything. They were going through a tough time after all. Austin, unfortunately, did little to help. One day he called me and said, Ginny, I'm so sorry. It looks like I will be here for a while. Mom is nowhere near getting better. The doctor says that it will take at least two years. I have put in a transfer request at my job. Wait, what? Are you moving there permanently? What about me, Julius? I asked. Not permanent. I will only stay till Mum gets better. I don't want to be away from you, but your work won't allow you to stay here. I really need to be with my mum. I hope you can understand. I am sorry, he explained. There was nothing I could do. All I did was agree with his decision. However, I did tell him to keep strict boundaries with Megan. He agreed immediately. Those two years then became four. For whatever reason, Doris didn't recover. Every six months, I used to be hopeful for Austin's return. Then Doris comes back from the doctor and tells him that they need more time. This went on for four years. Yes, I was stupid because I didn't want to separate Austin from his mum. In the fourth year, I had had enough. I couldn't visit Austin and Doris because I didn't want to be around Doris. Plus, my work was too hectic and didn't allow much relief. Austin did visit a couple of times, but it wasn't enough. So, I decided to finally beg for a long leave and surprised Austin with a visit. However, the visit will never go as I planned. As soon as I stepped into the house, I found no sign of Doris or Austin. Instead, I heard faint noises of a child coming from a room. I was immediately alarmed and quietly went to check it out. What I found absolutely blew me away. I had never expected to be met with such a surprise. There was Megan and Doris happily playing with a child. From what I heard, the child was apparently Austin's son. I stood there for a long time without telling them. When the initial shock of seeing them got over, I immediately went into the room. I also made sure to record everything so that no one can flip their stories on me. I went in and said, what the hell is going on here? How did you get inside? We never heard you come in. Austin and I both have a freaking key, Doris. What is Megan doing here and who is the kid? I demanded. Well, I'm here because Austin is in a relationship with me, and this is our son. Austin is his father. We've been together for the past four years, Megan explained confidently. So, this is what you guys have been up to? Oh, what about your paralysis, Doris? Was that an excuse to make Austin live here? I retorted. How else would I have separated you from him? Austin and Megan belong together. 
They were destined to be together since they were children. Austin only married you because you have money. Once he got it all, he came back to Megan. You are nothing to Austin, Ginny. He will never be yours. He refused to divorce you because you gave us a nice lifestyle. Even if you leave now, you will have to give him half of your money, Doris accused. Oh, we will see about that, Megan. You all will pay for this. I can promise you that, I said firmly. I left the room and went to the porch. As soon as I was there, I broke down in tears. I didn't care if they heard. While I was crying my eyes out, I had some lingering doubts that Austin was lying to me. So, I called Austin and said, Why the hell is Megan and a kid in our house? Austin, she has been telling me that the kid is yours. What the hell is going on? Tell me the truth before I do something drastic. What are you saying, Jenny? Megan is only here for a few weeks. She lost her apartment, so she's been staying with us for two weeks. I'm so sorry I didn't tell you. The kid is not mine, Austin explained desperately. I swear that is not my child. I don't know why Megan said that, Ginny. I would never cheat on you. The only reason I didn't go back home is because Mum has been sick, Austin pleaded. I hung up the phone and sent him the video recording I had. Thank God I remembered to record everything for proof. Whether or not Austin was lying was not the point at the moment. I wanted him to know that I have proof. After seeing the video, Austin didn't reply. However, he showed up at the house within 30 minutes of me sending it. He came home and said, Jimmy, you have to believe me. I didn't cheat on you. This is all a setup. I had no idea Mum could walk. You need to believe me. I am shocked and feel betrayed. What about Megan and the kid? Are those lies as well, Jenny? He asked desperately. I would never cheat on you. I already told you that. You know Megan has tried time and time again to break us up. She is just lying to you, only let her in because she has been helping my man with all the doctor's appointments, Doris admitted. Suddenly, it all made sense to me. Freaking Doris and Megan set everything up so that they could trap Austin. I was beyond shocked. Even Austin looked pretty devastated as he cried and begged me to believe him. Then he burst into the house to confront them. He called Megan and Doris out, and immediately they came running. I noticed that Doris was now using the wheelchair. That further proved that Austin wasn't lying. After ruling, he said, Megan, why the hell are you telling Ginny that your son is mine? Are you insane? Here's the text, punctuated and formatted into short paragraphs. I would never cheat on her with you or anyone else. What is wrong with you? I don't know what you were talking about, Austin. Jenny must be lying to you. She hated the fact that I'm helping Doris. She had no mercy for a disabled woman. Yeah. How can you shout at Megan when all she did was help your ungrateful wife? She didn't even come to see me. She's trying to take you away from me, Austin. You have to see it, Mom. I know that you are not paralyzed. Quit the acting. I have video proof from Ginny that you have been lying to me. At the queue, I took out my phone and played the video for everyone to see. The look on their faces was awful. They immediately went pale and then started to cry. Austin was fuming at this point and said, Stop with the tears. I want to know why you did this. Why are you trying to destroy my life, Mum? I spent four years of my life away from Ginny because of you. I need answers. I really did this so you can be with your true love, Austin. That which Jenny doesn't deserve you. Megan and you are meant to be together. Yes, you know, Austin, that we are meant to be. I even stayed single for you. I care about you and Doris, unlike your gold digger wife. You call me a gold digger, but you are the one who's tricking my husband. You are a home wrecker. How dare you call me that? I'm going to be Austin's new wife. You just wait and see. That's enough, Megan. I'm a married man, and you know I would never leave Jenny. I'm tired of your behavior, and you too, Mum. I think it's about time you leave.
That's when I took the opportunity to get my revenge against them. I took my phone and opened the contact for the local police. I showed them the number and said, I want you two out of the house right now. I pitied Doris because I thought she was sick. Now I know that everything was a plan to steal my husband. I won't tolerate this anymore. Get out, Megan and Doris. You can't kick us out. This is my son's house. He won't allow it. My son will never turn his back on me, and I will not allow Megan to be kicked out. Mom, what the hell are you talking about? This is not my house. That's right, Doris. This is my old childhood home. I let you live here out of pity. Now, if you two don't leave, I will call the police. Megan and Doris looked shocked by my revelation. I guess they never figured out that the house belongs to me. They looked scared and immediately started to beg Austin to let them stay. They said, Austin, you can't let your wife kick out your poor mother. You know I am sick. I know you are fine, Mum. The video proved that already. Please don't kick us out, Austin. Think about my son. He already loves you so much. Are you going to abandon him? You can't do this. I don't care. I feel sorry that your son has you as his mum. You have disrespected my wife and me enough. You need to leave. Megan and Doris kept pleading with Austin and emotionally blackmailing him. They also verbally attacked me and told me that I was destroying their relationship with Austin. When the verbal abuse escalated, I immediately called the cops for help. The cops arrived and found Megan trying to lunge at me and grab my hair. She was immediately arrested and taken into the cop car. Megan's son also went with the police so they could locate a legal guardian and hand him over. Now, technically, Doris qualified as a tenant, so I couldn't kick her out. However, the officers told her to find another place to avoid conflict. Me and Austin quickly called Doris's friend, who came and took her away. When they were gone, Austin broke down and apologized to me. He said, I'm so sorry, Ginny. I know I made a mistake by allowing Megan into the house. Mom kept pressuring me to house her. She was already taking care of her and driving her to the doctor, so the guilt got to me. Do you realize that Megan was taking care of Doris so that you cannot find out their plan? She intentionally drove your man to the doctor because they knew you would catch Doris pretending to be paralyzed. Oh my God, Ginny. I never thought of it that way. It never crossed my mind. Megan was always so close to Mum. I just thought she was helping out. I think that's when the full betrayal of Megan and Doris started to hit Austin. It was ugly. There was a lot of crying on both sides. Even I had to let out my emotions. After getting through the storm today, we talked about a lot of things and ultimately decided to press charges against Megan for trying to attack me. As for Doris, the first thing we did the next morning was get an eviction notice. The next day, we did get a call from Megan's mum. She said that she had her grandson in her custody. Megan never informed her then-boyfriend about the child since he was in a different state. He never found out. As soon as he knew, he decided to fly down to our city. From what she told me, he will be filing for full custody. Megan's violent behavior towards me would easily help him in court. It looked like Megan would lose custody of her son. It was all bizarre to us. She literally kept her son from his own father so that Austin would play dad to him. We also got the eviction papers in two days and served Doris. She was still at her friend's house who did not approve of her scheming ways. She kept her tantrums limited to her house so that she couldn't disturb us. From what we heard, she is devastated and still blames me for everything. I'm not even surprised at this point. As for me and Austin, things are not much better even after months after the incidents. We are both back in our old home and trying to get past what happened. Don't worry. The couple's counseling is on and going well. Austin is super pissed at his mum and Megan for almost ruining his marriage. 
Megan ended up losing custody of her son, while the bio dad got emergency custody. As for Doris, she is still at a friend's house who is pushing her to get a job. Since Austin has promised never to help his mum again, looks like she will be back to work after all.